Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. Well, the FOMC put the cat amongst the pigeons to a slight, to slight degree yesterday by reiterating the end of Q, uh, QB3, which was widely expected. And uh, even though they did hint towards low interest rates for longer, they used the term that there was already significant slack in the labor market, which many traders have taken to say that uh, US rates will rise mid-2015, which we've heard multiple times before and there's lots of backtracking. But nonetheless, the dollar has rampaged across um, against versus the um, the GBP, the euro and dollar yen is a hair's breadth away from 110 yen. So we've seen significant moves in the dollar overnight and equity markets have had a bit of a cheer as the uh, US economy is perhaps doing slightly better than um, the other commentators had expected. So we punched through potential resistance at 16.969. The next potential resistance is an all time high on the US 30 at 11.362. The UK 100 is also moving higher. Again, it's got a lot more ground to make up. Next potential resistance 65.19. Next potential support is only slightly above that right now at 64.63. Technicals are neutral. Still lots more room for manoeuvre. Uh, things are looking pretty good. But there is a significant amount of economic data out today in Germany, Europe and the US. Uh, which will help to reaffirm that Fed stance. So you've got yeah, US GDP and jobless claims due later on today, but we'll cover that in a second. Japan 225, really ramping ahead with because of those moves in dollar yen. Uh, getting quite close to that next potential resistance, 15828. Um, it's trading above both moving averages. Um, MACD is close to crossing the zero line, and the other technicals are not yet overbought. So uh, I wouldn't be massively surprised that Japan 225 was looking at a retest of its recent multi year high at 16,396, um, as long as there's no intervention by the Bank of Japan to. Um, to support the Japanese yen if we get closer to, you know, obviously we're getting close to 110 right now, but of course we get to 115, 120, that's when things get a bit more dicey. So looking at, as a matter of fact, it's dollar yen we want to look at right now. This is looking like a decent move to the upside here. Uh, the potential resistance short term, 110. Uh, next, but the kind of longer term potential resistance is 110 spot 77. So that's looking quite interesting today. So looking at crude oil, West Texas, it can't get a break. Nothing really much else to report here. It seems to be quite happy, bouncing around eighty dollars until we break eighty to reach out on seventy-seven and we stay below eighty-four. It's not really that exciting. I think a lot of people, a lot of traders, will be waiting for eighty-four to reintroduce potential short positions if they think it's going to go down lower, or if they think there could be, um, you know, greater demand in the future that the markets are believing that. Um, the slowdown in China is not going to be so pronounced. People might look at 84 as a springboard to get into a breakout of any long position. So gold's pretty much um, gone the opposite direction. Rising, rising rates are always bad for, for gold and you've got that strengthening US dollar. It's going to get a lot of pain coming its way and it's only just broken out b b below potential support at 1218. To be honest, 1180 uh, is going to be the next potential support and from a charting perspective it looks pretty ugly. Crossover in the MACD. Lots of room for maneuver on the RSI and the slow stochastic, and um, obviously we've got more U.S. data due today, and if that supports the view of um, a stronger U.S. economy, and people keep on banding about next interest rate rise 2015 rather than 2016, which many other people had expected, then gold is going to get smashed. So moving on to euro dollar, uh, euro dollar again, lots of breakouts here. Uh, if this was at the bottom of, uh, if it's at the top of an uptrend here, that would be a nice head and shoulders pattern. But it's not. It's at the bottom of the downtrend. People might be looking at 125. Uh, if that's a potential for a double bottom, it probably won't be. Eurozone still needs needs to look to cut rates. The US dollar is uh, just strengthening. Um, 125 is the next potential support, and the candles are accelerating to the downside. So, looking at uh, GBP USD, um, that weakness, uh, well, the strength of the US dollar seeping through against the sterling. Um, kind of concern now, if we break below one spot 59.17, that will break that consolidation area that it had looked like we had been building. Um, so, this level is going to be a, an important pivot. If we break down to 157.42, then uh, sterling will be in trouble. So, I come at data wise, as I mentioned, we've got um, German employment data some Eurozone employment data, a bit of GDP and jobless claims. Make sure you've got all your alarms set for that. That's 12.30 UK time uh, for both of those. Um, and then if we fast forward on to Friday, uh, we've got Eurozone CPI and we've got the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey later on. Euro dollar, dollar looks very vulnerable to downside 
risk should a lot of these European data um, releases come out worse than expected because people are just waiting now for news of a European rate cut to support the Eurozone economy, especially if the US economy is beginning to build up momentum after all they have to compete against the US. So keep your eye on the chart form as ever, make insights populate going forward. I'm actually on holiday for the next two weeks, so join me again when I get back. I'll run about the 14th of November.